Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is episode 15 of our Let's Play. If you missed episode 1, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner. Highly suggest watching that episode if you haven't, especially if you're a beginner. I feel like I go over a lot of the early aspects of the campaign in sort of a tutorial like manner. Um, as far as what we're doing now, it's July 11th, nearly July 12th, which sort of starts the, the major part of the New York campaign. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm prepping for a battle at Montreal, because I do want to take Montreal eventually, so I'm just kind of moving my forces around. Here's what I was talking about prepping for New York. So, report about British plans. We have received information that the British are planning an attack on New York this summer. Perhaps it is worth taking the trouble to create a defense. It is necessary to allocate funds to organize regiments to protect New York minus 10,000 Continentals, or I think we have time to send troops and stop the invasion. I want more troops, mainly because um, our, our available manpower is getting a little bit low. And what I'm doing here is I have a cavalry unit. They are moving up to Burlington. And then I've been upgrading troops uh, all around. So this looks great. Not enough resources. Oh, am I out of fur? Because I made them a guard unit? Interesting. That, okay. That's uh, a little bit bummer on my part, but that's fine. Um, I just need to pay attention that the guards units do take a little bit of fur. So there's my cavalry moving up to Burlington. That'll be great. Von Steuben's over here. I could actually bring Von Steuben to be part of this battle, and we can have two generals in this battle, because it will be a big battle. Um, not enough resources, not enough guns. Is this what... What do you mean not enough guns what kind of guns do you need six pounders we don't are we not building enough six pounders let's uh let's boost that up a little so we don't have that issue we are kind of uh, working on virginia 76s for those of you there wondering i built up my united states muskets for a while and now we're going up into virginia 76s i don't recommend rushing just the highest tier of gun you need to make sure you have the other tiers of guns available for your other units until you can completely phase out weapons. Like, I, I'm pretty much completely phased out on civilian muskets. The only thing that takes civilian muskets now are the artillery regiments, which is, you know, <laughs> a, a little, little annoying. I wish you could tell the artillery regiments that they use U.S. muskets or something. It would make it to where when the British bum rush them that they're not the absolute worst unit in the game, but... That's a, that's a completely different man matter. How's your condition? Your condition is good. So I do need to move these guys up. They need to go to Fort St. John because Fort St. John has terrible loyalty. So when I start moving my forces out, um, they will, there, there'll actually be some issues there. So that's, let's have you guys leave garrison, join a brigade. Let's have you guys leave garrison, go up here. You guys will also leave your garrison, and you will attempt to form some sort of a brigade. Um, sometimes you have to push the brigade button 50 times because the army organization... I, I, I say this multiple times, I, I love this game, but man, there are certain things that they absolutely have to figure out, and uh, army organization being at the very, the very top of that list, so... Let's move this ragtag army out onto Montreal, and hopefully we can take a major battle to the Quebecois. Is it Quebecois? I forget how you actually say it. Um, okay, so Cherokee and U.S., they, they no longer like us. Okay. Um, right now that doesn't matter, but it looks like in the next, in the next um, patch that there'll probably be something... That actually matters that we general von steuben is a reinforcement you know whatever i'm fine with that even though he is mostly in the red box this is what i mean about the army organization is terrible i don't get why like when i form an army why anybody would be a reinforcement just like and then these two brigades are so far apart the cav are so far apart it's it's an absolute mess and disaster moving troops across the strategic map i really hope the devs figure out something that is i i mean i i, I can't say like a hundred times better because a hundred times zero is zero 
this to me is just completely unacceptable. And I hope you guys understand when I harp on mechanics like this, I just want the game to be really good and successful when the game releases. And right now, there's enough stuff in it where I'm like, ah, you really have to fix that. Here we are on the battle map. You can see absolute chaos <laughs> ensuing here. Um, you know, uh, something about deployment zones. I think that's all that needs to be said. So the British Horde is moving forward, and I actually, uh, I thought their skirmishers might go to the other direction, but it looks like they're really hitting this flank. There, there might be a couple on the other flank, so I might move. I might move one of these cav, cav companies over that direction, but we are trying to, to position ourselves in a way that makes sense. So. Let's see if we can if we can get this artillery up in time. One of the problems with not having a deployment zone and with how the British are just they're not they're very aggressive, which is good and bad. Uh, it's bad when they're absolutely overmatched and it's good when let's see here. Sorry for the pause in my thought there. You you'll know that that happens. A lot for me. Um, it's bad when the enemy are completely overmatched and they should just play more of like a defensive game as opposed to being overly aggressive. There's also something wrong with the elevation here. Um, it's making it very difficult to position men exactly where I want to position them. I don't know if you guys can see that, but where my cursor is compared to where the line is is not matching up. So that's a little bit weird. Um, and it's because this is like a hill, but the game doesn't really do a good job of explaining or showing you that this is a hill. Come on, guys. I mean, I'm really struggling to move my line in, into any semblance of an organized line. It's, uh, where, where my cursor is is not, not where things want to go. Okay, so this is, this is getting hot and sweaty already. Holy cow. Um, so let's, let's move that. Okay. You guys need to charge. This is what I was talking about. The British, uh, the British sometimes get really, really aggressive with their charging. So we need to come out on this flank. If we can grab that artillery, that might be, that might be really beneficial. Grab you guys, move you over here, pull you up. Oh, no, 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 no. Pull back, pull back, pull back. I just thought about that. They need a guard mode in this game pretty badly. Um, guard mode would be phenomenal. Okay, so you guys, come on, keep keep pulling back. You're good. Over here, grab this cavalry, and then over here, I think I think they just need to charge into these skirmishers. That's probably uh, very important. Hopefully, we can. They are routing. This is, this is a pretty chaotic battle. Wish I could zoom out a little bit more. Would be fantastic. Von Steuben um, finally came onto the battlefield and charged like all the way into the middle. So that's, that's never great. How's this going at over here? We are taking some casualties. Let's see if we can get out of there um, before we start taking a lot of, who is this? How did you, no, 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 come on. Somebody said I can click on this. I'm clicking on it like crazy right now, and it's not its not showing me what unit surrendered. I finally found out which unit surrendered, but um, that, I, I just want to point out, like, I've tried that in the past, and it never, it never seems to work. So that's why I don't click on it, and why I say, like, oh, I wish I could figure out who it is. Like, once again, clicking on it, nothing's, nothing's happening when I click on it. So... Uh, I just wanted to point that out. I've, I've seen that comment a few times, like, hey, you can click on that, and it doesn't doesn't seem like that is actually the case. This is a pretty, pretty crazy battle. Oh, man. They just keep charging our artillery, and part of it is because, wow, they shattered? The artillery shattered. That's, that's nuts. Okay. <laughs> um, can you guys get back on your guns? We are, we are, we're having issues right now. Uh, part of the issue is 
our artillery has civilian muskets. And civilian muskets are absolutely terrible in melee. They don't have the bayonet ring or whatever it's called. And this flank is not doing well. Go on, get out of there. And that's... It's... It leads to problems like that where if you charge the British artillery, they're actually pretty, pretty beefy. Whereas if you charge the colonial artillery, they're in incredibly squishy and it's really, really disappointing to be honest. And I, I don't know, well, I do know the fix. I just, I just said the fix. The fix is allow the American artillery to have the same guns. Like, allow them to have American uh, U.S. muskets as opposed to civilian muskets. That would that would solve a lot of problems, and I would I would really appreciate it. So, over here, I think. Oh man, I didn't realize how aggressive are we being with that cavalry. Okay, I think uh, I think things are going okay on certain spots of the battlefield and terrible in other spots. Some of those. Man, I would love to be able- that is major, major frame lag. Holy cow. Um, so there's- there's guys that actually surrendered, so that's really good to see. And then you guys combine- I don't know- did our artillery shatter? They are shattering our artillery left and right. That's, uh, really obnoxious. Okay, you guys need to step into there. I don't know what that major frame rate loss was. But that was, that was pretty ugly. Um, so that's, yeah, we didn't even, like, take care of their artillery. That's, that's really weird. Alright, this flank, not going well whatsoever. Can you guys get on this? Can you guys move over here? And then they're, they're going to bum rush charge again. No? Okay, maybe not. Friendly fire incident, perfect. Absolutely love seeing friendly fire incidents. <laughs> um, how's our cavalry doing over here? I think we can... I think we can crush those guys. And then over here, we pro... No. Let me draw my line how I want to draw it, please. Um, more guys shattering on there. And this is a... This is a really bloody battle. But that's... You know, I, I don't like battles to actually be stupid easy. I don't know if you guys can tell when I play. Um, I, I like a challenge, so sometimes I don't play super duper cheesy because I personally really enjoy like playing kind of what I consider the correct way, which, you know, there's no such thing as playing the correct way, but in my mind, there there is. Uh, some of these units getting really beat up. I don't know why this artillery can't sit in line and I can't I don't know if you see where my cursor is versus where the the unit thing is there's a major problem with the hill right now and I am I am struggling mightily because of the hill so let's see if we can regroup a little where we, we've definitely had some shattered units okay can you guys shoot that shoot that that'll be great okay you guys are looking really bad right about now. All right, artillery, come on. Let's, uh, let's wipe out the artillery. That cav... See, like, the British artillery is incredibly strong in melee, whereas you've seen our artillery, they just kind of... They, they suck. I mean, there's no... There's no real good way of saying it. Our, our artillery absolutely sucks. All right, can you now get into melee with them? And then that means I need you guys to shoot them. There's the frame rate thing where it goes 9,999 artillery. I thought they fixed that bug, um, but I, we just saw it. It was just there. Over here, I would like... Come on, let me... It's nowhere near where my mouse cursor is. Okay, you guys need to get out of there. Um... I think that was that was pretty good cab charge if I do say so myself and then you guys your prisoners of war the center is looking okay not great but okay actually the center is looking pretty good now I think about it shift you guys down this way 
Um, I will mention, I've had... Every once in a while I get things about, like, please, for the love of God, pause in the battle. I pause at the very beginning to... Because it's, it's absolute chaos and the game doesn't give you the proper tools necessary to play the game properly. We just lost some skirmishers. I figured that would happen. Um, I clicked on the thing that said somebody surrendered and I can't see anybody that has surrendered. Uh, I don't play that way and telling me to like get off my high horse and you know play that way that's not going to work i it just just i come from the era where you play real-time strategy games as a real-time strategy game and that means no pausing and i absolutely hate watching youtube videos where the youtuber spams the pause button so if i hate it and i don't feel it's enjoyable i am absolutely not going to you know spam the pause button in my battles maybe if like just something is completely getting out of control and i can't figure out what to do i'll hit the pause button and i'll edit it out but in other cases you will you're not going to see me spam the pause button and that's just it's just not going to happen so um for those of you that you know mention it it's not often, it's just like every once in a while, but it feels like very strong opinions when I comment back and say why I don't hit the pause button. It's not going to happen, and I would very much appreciate you guys stop, you know, stop trying, because that's not how I play. I, I don't enjoy it, and if I don't enjoy it, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. So that's... Uh, that, that's the end of my rant. I'm not I'm not mad at you guys for mentioning it. I, I love when you guys comment. It's just every time I've said why I don't pause, I kind of get like pushback and it's like, no, I I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. And if I don't enjoy it, then that's that's like the end all be all to me. So this is we're just wrapping this up. We're trying to capture as many men as possible. Of course, their overpowered artillery are coming back. Um, as far as artillery though, do we have any artillery that still, there's, that there's still guns that aren't crude? That is one thing to make sure of, but, uh, looks like, looks like we're doing a pretty good job of grabbing as much as we can. Our cavalry doing their job, and I'll probably get rid of the rest of this video as we, or <laughs> the rest of this video, the rest of this battle, I'll, I'll cut it out. Here's the end of the battle. That was an absolute bloodbath. I mean, we lost 1,175 men. Says we lost six guns. Hopefully, I mean, I, I recruited every gun I could. At least I thought I did. And then they lost 23 guns, 570 missing. So they have no men left. That is that is pretty awesome. As far as the best units, uh, man. So they they got destroyed, which is that's a big bummer. That was probably six pound guns. That that hurts. Uh, skirmishers, we knew they got destroyed. That doesn't hurt as much to me. Wow, the best unit for the British was no Skipsy. I can tell because it says captured, and we didn't have any captures on our end. And then uh, a couple down here, you can see. So pretty good battle on our part. Okay, trying to grab the rest of the Canadians over there. Um, looks like a bunch of them got away, unfortunately, but that's that's fine. Well. We're not going to chase them down hardcore. There, there was a little bit of a surrender right there. We're going to move this over to Montreal. And then try try to capture Montreal. Benedict Arnold will do some reconnaissance. Ooh, that's not, that was like a mix of Wisconsin and Renaissance and reconnaissance. He's going to do some reconnaissance up north. Now that was a... Uh, oh, man. They, they need to make this a little bit, a little bit easier to... To grab supplies. I, I I think I've said that before. Uh, we secured the province of Montreal, gained a strategic foothold in Canada. So 25 rep, 20,000 money, 30 fur. 30 fur is pretty awesome, which makes a lot of sense for, for Canada. They, they were widely considered like the fur exchange for the British. Widely considered? That's That doesn't sound right. They were the fur exchange for the British. 
Um, it was mostly the the British trying to maintain their their relationships with the Native Americans up there, and they understood that the Canada was like a crazy fur trade, and that was where a lot of their money came from. America itself, or the the thirteen colonies, were absolutely terrible, um, mod like terrible for money. Okay, so who did I lose here? I lost the skirmishers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that makes sense. What are oh they need Virginias. Okay. Apply. Did I lose anybody else? It said we had cannons destroyed, but looks like looks like everybody has their cannons. Um so this is really good. Now if we can go up and take uh take the rest of Canada, that would be fantastic. But I do have New York to worry about. And I do need to probably move some forces down here. Um, so it's, it's probably just kind of looking at what is left in Canada and figuring out how much manpower I need to dedicate to this. So at the moment, we could just roll up on Canada right now and we'll probably do something like that. Man, this is this is actually pretty rough for, for our men. So let's do something like grab... What do we need to grab? You two are absolutely decimated. Fort St. Chambly, they can go over there. We could the the cavalry is decimated too, so probably get rid of them. By get rid of, I mean bring them down somewhere. Uh, like let's let's move them to Hubbardton first. Okay, let's move them to Burlington first. And then Montreal might have enough men. It's really, it's not looking great, but we might be able to push up through Canada, take Canada. I bet that might be a good idea. Oh, as far as Montreal, what does, they have nothing there? I saw this complaint on Discord and I completely agree with it. Why don't, why don't the British build anything? It's kind of weird to me. So we'll start building a fur trader. That seems like a good idea as far as. That goes, um, also, I wanted to build, what did I want to build? Oh, I wanted Fort Lavelle. We don't have enough resources. I wanted to turn Fort Lavelle into a fort, which is the tier two fort. I think that would be really cool. Um, so let's see, Steuben, dissolving out of alliance, Britain and Miami's are rising. Okay, that's fine. Over here, just need to figure out you know, what to do, Burlington, holy cow, um, Fort St. Chambly, are these guys, I also need to double check to see if anybody leveled up, that is always a good thing to double check for, so over here, bunch of militia and some red coats, so I feel like we could push out from Montreal with all of this, and then I wish I could make a brigade out of that, but I have to unclick the the supply wagon. Willpower, firearms, melee. I like willpower. I like my guys not running away. I think willpower is one of the more powerful things in the game because if you guys don't retreat, they're just that much stronger. Wow, they those replenished fast. Okay, let's move you down to Hubbardton now, and we're just gonna leapfrog our way our way down. So that's join brigade and then can you guys join brigade you need to move up i would like to take that before they they reinforce it i think that would be really nice to do so and then if we can actually move you as an army now that would be that would be absolutely fantastic so i feel like we're we're in a good spot now especially getting canada sort of out of the way it would be great to not have an insane canadian front to deal with. That's sort of my thought process there. Okay, looks like the British are sort of sallying out to meet us. We will take this battle. They have no cannons left. This should be a complete massacre. Um, and then hopefully we can, you know, like ride up to Quebec, take Quebec before the 70 days. There's no negative for taking Quebec, but I think it stops the like Canadian invasion stuff. And then we'll just leave the British to rot in this part of part of the world this is as I, I i don't really care about this part of the world i don't know if these numbers are correct at all well i know they're not correct because intelligence the intelligence tiers are that it's 
it's an argument for a different thing. Let's, let's go ahead and take this battle before I delve into that. In theory, the British should run away immediately. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to deploy my lines as usual. Wait for the British to do their, you know, ridiculous attacking. And some of my forces are really beat up. So we are, we are combining a lot of our forces because they are absolutely beat up from those previous battles. If, uh, if the British don't attack us right away, which would be nice, the British should be on the defensive, but it looks like they're attacking us anyways. I was going to say, we'll start pushing our men up in proper formation, but that doesn't look like that's going to happen. So we will probably play the defensive game. I would love in the future if they can figure out the for, with the AI how to get the AI to properly play play the, the game because all of these battles are kind of the same at the moment and it's it's unfortunate because I think this game can be so much more dynamic. I and by the same I mean like I scramble to deploy my line, my line is barely formed by the time the British attack me. By the time my line is formed on certain battles, the battle is over. So you don't get the beautiful cinematics that you you would think of in this time period. I mean, this time period is about the line warfare. And people will say like, oh, the Americans didn't do that. Yeah, they did. They totally did. Um, they were trained by the British. Their army manual was the British army manual. They knew how to do line warfare. There's plenty of battles in history in the American Revolution where they fought in line. Um, not every battle is like the Battle of New Orleans in 18... was that? 1815, where... the... is it 1815? Oh man, my, my time frame is terrible. Um, I know it's the War of 1812, but not every battle is like the Battle of New Orleans where it's like Bayou Swamp Farmers in a swamp attacking the British. Um, and it's, I feel like the movie The Patriot really, really screwed up with, um, like, the, the common knowledge of this time period. Uh, as much as I like the movie The Patriot in terms of an entertaining movie, it's an absolute horrible movie when it comes to understanding historical accuracies. But even in that movie, you saw the Americans form up line. Um, and there are plenty instances of the Americans, like, holding against the British and forming line. One of the other things, I, I received a comment about, like, the scheme's not very historically accurate because of da-da-da-da-da, and one of the things was the Americans didn't win line battles. And that is absolutely not true. The Americans won plenty of stand-up battles versus the British. Um, and I always refer to one of the, like craziest battles of the war is the Battle of Calpens, where the Americans destroyed the entire British army. It was like 20% of the British army was left from that battle. And you might not think that that's a, like, a big battle or whatever, because it was like just over a thousand on each side. That is a big battle in the Revolutionary War. Like, Bunker Hill was a huge battle and the British lost uh, like over a thousand casualties in that battle and even though the British won that battle they, it was absolutely crippling it was I mean it's a ferric victory the Battle of Bunker Hill they lost so many men that they couldn't continue their offensive in in the uh, Massachusetts theater that's how bad that battle was for the British so it's like it's one of those battles where it's like, yeah, the British technically won, but they, they didn't win. <laughs> they didn't win at all. They they really lost in the long term of things, hence the, the Ferric victory thing. But anyways, this battle is just going to end like this. So we're just going to go back to the global map. Uh, we lost negative 128 men. Somebody said this is like when you combine units, that's probably what happens. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, I, this game's in early access, so... You know, there's going to be bugs, there's going to be errors, as long as the devs look like they are working on errors and look like they are trying to make the game better, that to me makes the game worth playing, worth getting through the bugs. Obviously, 
If you're somebody who can't handle bugs, don't play early access games. Wait for it to be polished. Let people like me play these games and give feedback to the developers because I'm not going to sit there and like, how could you have a bug like this? This is inexcusable. No, like they're working on code and this is such a minor detail. Um, and I, I, I want to stress that to a lot of people. Like this game is in early access people. So um, every once in a while I get these comments of like, oh, this is ridiculous. And I'm like, the, the game's so far away from being done. It was just released like maybe six months ago at most. I think it was more like four months ago to early access. Most games that go into early access are in early access for years, years upon years. They don't just like, oh, here's early access. Oh, here's, you know, a fully released game. So I just want to stress that to people. Um, keep in mind, game is in early access. Uh, so that's my spiel. See if we can get any of these guys to surrender. Tilson surrendering would be huge. Would absolutely love if that happened. They are sticking around, so maybe... Uh, I don't know. Without cavalry, it's a lot harder to to get the guys to surrender. So yeah, they're not. They're not going to surrender, so... Unfortunate in that regard. Let's grab all of these supplies. See what we can do here. We do need more men coming up this way. I would love to make level 2 forts. As I said, though, we do need to pay attention to the to the New York invasion, so we need as many men as possible. That is very, very important. What do I have over here? Recruiting house. Can we turn it into a barracks? We can. Um, that's that's really big. Um, nothing. Oh, 73 rep. Um, so I was given some advice offline. There's there's these early early technology trees that like boost your boost your research percentage this late in the campaign might not be the the greatest thing to do but i've got the extra rep to do it and i'm not i'm not really pressed for research at the moment so it's just kind of one of those things where let's, let's just grab them for i guess completionist sake oh, there's a there's a little wagon there i don't think our general can capture capture a wagon um, our troops, they, they are bruised and battered, but not as bruised and battered as the British are. I do have to worry about Falmouth attacking Portsmouth. I, I've i fought so many battles of Portsmouth on this campaign, and I have fought even more offline. 1,139, but it's just militia. And 129 brown... Oh, brown bass 69s. That's, that's good to see there. Let's pause this and... Let's go to the project tree. 5% um, research speed sounds great. There's not a lot I need to unlock at the moment. We'll we'll go down like Continental Army Departments. Uh, I don't really care about the Grenadier companies. We could do like offensive strategy and tactics. But I, I think like unlocking these extra units, that would be cool because they're just free units. You do have to build them out a little bit more. But that's, you know, a free officer, free units. Sometimes they've got some cool things like Morgan's Rifles had two skirmisher units. So you can't usually get two skirmisher units. More generals will also be very important too. I would like to get Artemis Ward and Nathaniel Green, mainly because this is plus one general general limit. That's, that's the important thing there. So we're sitting pretty over here. We could do... What is Maritime Nation, by the way? That is up here. I would love to be able to build like the USS Constitution and build up 24, 32 pounder guns. Um, it would be cool to be able to build these because these are really, really good ships. And if our if our ships ever have too much damage on them and I need to sell them, that would be a good good thing to have there. As far as we have tons, can I do? Fort Lavelle now? Yes. I want to build Fort Lavelle. I don't know how long it'll take, but uh, probably take forever. And it should have told me... Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you anymore. Like, I really wish it did over there. You can't actually see anymore. So I need to figure out over here how, how to take care of Canada. I have way too many militia in really crappy loyalty places i need their loyalty to go up because like i don't want troops that 
in all of these places. I should have put a loyalty thing in Montreal. Can we put a printing press? Let's do that so I don't forget. We are building church there. Church there. Let's build a printing press here. Oh, they actually have decent construction points. That's good. And then we'll... Not enough to create a unit. Hmm. I'm a, I'm in a I'm in a pickle here. I need another unit to go take. Are you guys? Is Hubberton Hubberton is hundred percent? I just have to watch out that they don't don't like move their forces into Hubberton. But I'm thinking if I if I move Lee to Burlington, and I move Burlington to Montreal. And I move Montreal to, is it Tra Riviere? Somebody told me how to pronounce it before. It's like Troy, but Troy Riviere. I'm pretty sure it comes down to three rivers. So I'll probably just call it three rivers. If if I'm wrong on that translation, let me know. I, I do want to attempt to get my translations correct. Uh, obviously, I'm not the greatest at things like that. And uh, let's see. Yeah, we're just doing a lot of moving out of forces at the moment. Making making sure everything is ready for New York. Um, we have a little bit more time. Hopefully we can get the Battle of Quebec in this episode. I did want to show off production management at the moment. We're building 12-pound field guns. We have 6-pound field guns being built to replace the 6-pounders that we lose in battles. We have a couple hunter rifles being built. Short brown besses for our cavalry. And then Virginia 76s are the mainstay right now of what we are building. That's sort of where we are for production and our units, they're pretty well equipped at this point. Most of our Fusiliers have Brown Besses or Virginia 76s. In fact, I think all of our Fusiliers do. I kind of go back and do that off screen. As far as, do we have more Cavalry? No, we have two. Two is fine. The problem with Cavalry is horses. And I have tons of stables. You'll see that I, I have stables like all over the place. Did it actually auto sell? That'd be interesting if it actually auto sold because we got 30 from um, auto sell and storage auto purchase. Interesting. No, I don't want auto purchase. What are you doing? Don't auto purchase. Crazy game. Um, Yeah, that's interesting. We got 30 from Montreal, so I don't know if it auto sold. We do have tons of money, so... Starting to think it did actually do the auto sale. Let's uh let's move these guys up on Quebec before anything crazy happens in Quebec. And then that'll that'll be good because we have we have men moving out. You can see Burlington already wants to rebel. Because why not? That's that's their it feels like their thing at the moment. Port Rice, that's cavalry. They get the cavalry. Let's get the cavalry down to New Haven. Uh, so July 23rd. I really have to be mindful of... Please tell me you are actually up here. Sometimes the units get stuck and it drives me absolute bonkers that they're... Yeah, like how far back is this unit? Why didn't you join up with your, with your group? Terrible. Bad Fort Knox. Well, Henry Knox, but yeah. You, you get what I mean. All right, join up the brigade, join army, then move out. Um, okay, so Montreal has dudes in it. Bennington has, or Burlington has dudes in it. If I called it Bennington earlier, that's uh, that's my mistake over there. Fort Rice, you guys made it. We don't have any invasion of Portsmouth. You guys are making it over there. Hopefully, you'll make it before they rebel, and then we'll capture Quebec. That'll be fantastic to shore up the Canadian frontier. Uh, the, getting the resources worth it. I just don't think it's like worth rushing it over other things in the game. Uh, people get so like stuck on these these objectives and I, I just feel like it's a it's a mistake. What are you guys' conditions looking like? Pretty good to be honest, which is fantastic. Um, we we have tons of men. They have basically just militia. So let's go, let's move forward, take this battle, that's uh, before we get too far 
and forget what we're doing. Let's go over here. So what is this quartermaster chief? As far as things that we are building, um, none of this is like really interesting anymore to be honest. Uh, we don't really need that. Unit provisions. XP would be good. So we could go down. I don't know if the grain mill is really in the game yet. I don't think it is, but we'll just go ahead and do that because why not? And then we'll take this battle, and that'll probably be it for the episode once this battle is over. On the battlefield, moving forces out, combining men, all of that jazz. I think I screwed up in the beginning because the camera angle faces your army, so I had my guys facing the wrong direction to start with. Shouldn't be a problem. Oh, this map is terrible if I remember. Canada has a lot of hills, and the hills are really wonky. You, you probably... You, you saw that in the last battle I fought, I believe, where the hills were just kind of kind of a mess and made it to where clicking on the battlefield was a little bit obnoxious. Let's just say that. So let's try and get our troops back into formation. Actually, why don't we do something like move you guys up over there. You guys can go over here. Actually, put you guys out blank. That'll be fantastic. Put you guys out in the flank. That'll be fantastic. Grab you guys. Move you out. And then just get a nice big chonky line going. The guards over here. You guys hold. And then you guys can push up just a little. You guys are taking some, some casualties that I don't want you to take. And then grab you guys. We'll place you out on this flank. And then put you guys over here with the... Uh, they have artillery? I didn't realize that. Looks like it's mortars, though. How it's uh, coming down. Yeah, those are mortars. I don't know how I feel about mortars. They feel kind of crappy. Kind of really crappy, to be honest. Um, I, I feel like... I've seen people say they're really good in... In... Uh, siege battles, fortifications, forts, all of that. All the words that I'm struggling to say right now. Just because they can arc over, which that makes a lot of sense to me. But otherwise they seem kind of, kind of useless. Weird that I can't see that unit's flag. Um, and then over here, looks like we are doing fairly well. Well, maybe. Come on, what are you guys doing? Alright, you guys are kinda kinda being derps about things. So let's let's continue moving out. British, you know, just falling upon us. Would like to capture that. I would like to capture as many British as possible. They do have some skirmishers somewhere. I do need to be aware of that. That is that is a big big deal. Let's just shift you guys up a little bit. Shift you guys forward. We have Supply Wagon over here. Benedict Arnold probably needs to go over there too. And then Supply Wagon like so. We don't really want to do anything with those skirmishers because I feel like they're just about to the point where they're going to shatter. And I do not want them to shatter. Where are their skirmishers? Did they come all the way around? Because that would be bad. I did see skirmishers over here, right? Like, I'm not going that crazy. I know I'm crazy, but I feel like I'm not that crazy. Okay, I need this battle to speed up a little because the British are kind of attacking piecemeal. This is one of the AI issues that comes up every once in a while where I would love if the AI were to form a nice, beautiful line and attack me. Um, I give that, like, cinematography of line warfare. I think that would be absolutely fantastic to see, but might not happen, unfortunately. Let's have you guys move up. Let's have this cannon move up into the trees. Can I have you guys move up? You guys move, 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 move. And then we could do something like, like this. I'm just going to press the advantage. I'm a, nope, there are skirmishers. Okay, I wasn't going crazy. There are indeed skirmishers. Uh, I don't really want to send, like, guards at them. Okay. We will send you guys at them and the guards. 
yeah, we'll we'll do uh, three on one. That's you know how people people like it, right? Good old good old three on one. Can we move this artillery forward a little? They just fired canister, so that's perfect. Move you guys up behind them. Move the supply up. That artillery has taken a lot of damage. Alright, need these guys. Skirmishers are really, really interesting in a lot of the Ultimate General games. They're really powerful at times just because they can move, shift back, move forward, shift back, and it makes it really hard to pin them down. That's uh, one, of, one of the major, major reasons why you take skirmishers, it's just how difficult it is sometimes to, to pin them down. Okay, that artillery piece really annoying me, really need the British to go away. Um, this is where also having, having cavalry would really, really come into play. Okay, should be some nice volleys over here. That should be a flank hit too. It doesn't ever tell you if you're, if you're getting flank attacks on the AI. And man, they can move really fast. All right, I think I don't know if there's any infantry left over here, so let's let's start pushing forward. Let's push you guys forward. Let's push you guys forward also, and then continue continue moving forward. Okay, so there are some infantry over there, but let's have you guys charge into that, and then. This is obnoxious. Can we can we charge them? That's a really far distance to charge. Hopefully that we should win that. There's more shatters, that's perfect. And then over here, probably need this artillery to push up like so. And then this moves up. You guys move up. You guys move up. And then the enemy should no 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 stop. Stop. Get out of there! Okay, we finally got those guys. Man, that was annoying. And they're they're completely routed, so let's just have them move back. They're going to take some nasty, nasty hits. Uh, maybe maybe just stay there, and then this artillery could go there. You could go there. You guys can go maybe here, and then just keep pushing up on the enemy. You guys crisscrossing? Looks like it. Alright, charge! We probably won't be able to capture anybody because of how far away they are, so... That's probably... Well, we'll, we'll take a peek at this unit, see if we can... We'll super duper fast forward. That's the absolute technical terminology, by the way. Do not fire! Maybe we can... Maybe we can get these guys to surrender. We are doing a pretty good job, right? I wonder if one volley would... There we go. That was a good volley. Another volley? No? Volley? Maybe? Bueller? Okay. Whatever. Yeah, see if we can get anybody to surrender, because that would be fantastic if we could. There was a surrender. Come on, get them to surrender. That would be great. If we can, if we can cause a mass surrendering over here, um, no, nope, they got across. Okay, well, unfortunate. Uh, maybe. Let's see if we can get, like, one more volley off. No, nope. okay, they're running too far. Let's go to Quebec. That'll be great. Get you guys over here. And that was really successful to me. The little tiny blip that shows the battle. Way too small. <laughs> Absolutely too small. I feel like, like, the stars are great, the invasions are great, telling you where the battles are, not great, just, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. I just feel like they're really difficult for me to, for me to read. Um, I guess, oh, we, we did it before the battle, whatever that was. So, that feels really good. Benedict Arnold has taken Canada, we'll, we'll give it to him. Maybe that'll stop him from turning... From turning into a red coat, that would be great. We just need our loyalty to go up in these places so we don't have to station so many troops in Canada. Because that is 
that is a major problem to be honest we'll probably what do we want to do here we'll probably grab one of these regiments and move them yeah it'll be it'll be Knox. we'll move them back we probably only need two regiments at canada interception of merchant ships why is the rum always gone well the americans intercept the merchant ships and uh take it for themselves so there we go quebec is captured july 27th 1776 as I said, I believe the New York invasion is August 12th of 1776, so that'll be about 20,000 Brits coming down from Canada to New York. Now they come down via a fleet, and it's called an invasion, even though it's, you know, just moving troops from Nova Scotia down to New York instead of walking them down, down through Canada, through uh, modern-day Maine, Massachusetts, all of that. So, capturing... The strategic town of Quebec will help to protect us from the north. If we control the province of Quebec, we gain a strategic foothold in Canada. 24, 25 more rep, which is really, to me, the most important part. 25,000 continentals, which, uh, depending upon who you ask, they are worthless. Well, they, they were just worthless at the time. They weren't backed by anything. That was their problem. And then 100 logs, or lumber, or timber, or wood, however you want to phrase it. So... I feel like that is a good point to end this episode. Please like, comment, subscribe. All of that YouTube jazz greatly helps out the channel. Absolutely love reading your guys' comments, even though I had a mini rant about comments earlier. I still love reading those type of comments and engaging with you. Um, just, I, I needed to get my side out there so you, you understand why I may or may not do something. Anyways, we will see you in the next episode. As always, guys, until next time.